Every once in a while, Barrington and I, we, we, we give you a headline, it's lazy, we don't read all the details, and then you come across something where you just can't fake it. And uh, you need to bring an expert in. And thankfully, uh, for this next headline, we actually have the appropriate person uh, that we work with, or work for, I should say, uh, Mr. <laughs> Richard Carlton. And uh, let me, Barrington, let me read the headline, and then um, <laughs> I just want to make it very clear to those watching uh, that this doesn't implicate Barrington. So. The title of this headline is Bears are going extinct in stock markets, $13 trillion rebound. Um, and for this question, we've brought in Richard Carlton to help us explain with everything around us burning to the ground, how is the stock market rallying and seeing all-time highs? And we're even using the word trillions. So, so Richard, welcome to the show. <laughs> welcome to the show, Richard. And uh, for those that follow us and follow me on Instagram with my bear market handle, I was concerned that I was going extinct, and I want to rest assured that I'm not, but here to uh, dispel any rumor about that is our okay. very own Richard Carlton. Yes. Well, Why uh, is this happening? Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, and uh, indeed it would be a tragedy if uh, bears were to go extinct. Uh, <laughs> And uh, again, it's a real pleasure to join you because, uh, you know, three-time guy on hashtag finance and uh, oh. now first time on, uh, you know, after hours. Uh, do, do I get like a, you know, a bathrobe or something I can, uh, I well, can like try if you, out? If you get on SNL five times as a host, you, exactly. <laughs> you get to hang yeah. out in a special lounge with Steve Martin and Tom Hanks. In well, there's, um, yeah. you know, earlier in the show, we were talking about uh, the brokini, so. <laughs> <laughs> We'll get a we'll get you a brokini <laughs> for summer. Okay, well let's uh, get into the uh, deep uh, you know market <laughs> market structure conversation uh, you know before we get uh, too crazy. But uh, mm -hmm. you know um, when we look at uh, you know all time highs, market highs, we have to understand that we're looking at uh, indices. You know S and P five hundred, the Dow Jones, the S and P TSX composite, the CSE composite index, and uh, you know the issue here is you have to understand what's What's in that index, and where is the performance coming from? And uh, you know, it's what investment professionals refer to as performance attribution. So, who is or what companies are contributing to the rise in the indices? And when you look at it, um, you know, over the last uh, six months or so, the vast majority, and in fact, this has been true the last five years in the United States, is that the Netflix, Google, Apple, Amazon. Uh, Facebook have been responsible for a huge percentage of the returns of the S and P 500 uh, and and uh, you know the other broad market indices. Companies in the you know industrial sector, the banking sector, uh, and the hardest hit of, of all, of course, is the energy production se uh, sector, have not been doing very well at all. And so. The um, uh, investor intention and, in fact, the, the increase in prices has been limited to a very small number of stocks. Uh, we talked earlier today about uh, Exxon yesterday being uh, removed from the Dow Jones. And what was it, eight years ago? It was the largest company in the world. 20, 2012, largest company in the world. And now it's coming out of the Dow Jones, which is, a, you know, 30 stocks. So it's, a, it, it's not a broad market measure. But it's basically being replaced by Salesforce, you know, another company that's uh, done well um, over the last few years, in particular through the pandemic. So um, when when people talk about these all time highs, understand that it's not every segment of the stock market by a long shot. In fact, it's very narrowly focused on a small group of, uh, generally speaking, technology stocks um, that are expected to. Um, as uh, we return to whatever normal looks like uh, over the next uh, 12 to, uh, to, to, to 24 months, uh, do well under the new market and business conditions. Right. And Baratine, earlier you were talking about uh, what happens when things do get better, uh, when more people go back to work, what impact it's, that's going to have. Like, it's like, okay, things are, things are bad <laughs> right now. Yeah, we're seeing, uh, you know, trillion dollar, gains when things do return back to some sort of normalcy and people are as what we <laughs> were used to does that mean the stock market's going to go down does that mean what, what well, does that, it mean well that's that, that's a great question because of course you know when, when we look at where the performance has come from do you expect those stocks 
uh, to perform well in the in the you know the two to five year time horizon? And the answer is probably yes, right? I mean, those companies can continue to grow from where they are. There's addressable business for them to to do and to to capture. They can grow some more. Um, and in fact, if you think about retailing. Um, is Walmart going to take uh, Amazon's rise uh, lying down? Uh, are they going to compete with Shopify? Are they going to join forces with Shopify to compete against Amazon? Like, there's a lot of growth uh, in that particular space to come, and that can drive these overall uh, indices in ways that you think, "Hey, everything's great," but <laughs> the reality is maybe 80% of the stocks aren't doing so well, and that, in fact reflects what's going on in the real economy, not in the markets. And again, we talked earlier today about, uh, you know, how tough it is for lots of people. I mean, obviously, unemployment is, uh, is, is uh, you want to talk about a pandemic. There's a pandemic of unemployment in Canada and the United States. Incomes are shrinking. Um, it's tough uh, for, for, for people in the real economy. But we do have a small segment of really big companies uh, that are doing extraordinarily well under the current conditions. And that growth can, in fact, continue. Now, there's another factor, of course, that has to be uh, uh, looked at when we uh, examine the overall market conditions. And these are the sorts of things that we understand by uh, looking at behavioral economics, right? How do individuals make their buying and selling decisions? And there's been a lot of work done over the last generation in terms of how people decide to buy and sell stocks. And one of the things that we've learned is that people fear loss more than they enjoy the gains. And that drives an enormous number of decisions. In fact, it drives all the decisions. And one of the things that happens is if people see prices rising in a particular sector, they're terrified that they're missing out, fear mm -hmm. of missing out. And they will oh, pile no. in. Exactly. <laughs> And those prices will get bid up. I mean, does any of us believe that Tesla uh, has the ability to uh, grow at a faster rate and command higher margins than the rest of the automobile sector combined? You know, that's kind of a tough one. But is it a good company? Do they provide good products? Do their customer service uh, uh, rankings uh, very, very high? Yeah, absolutely. But uh, does it value... Does it justify the current uh, valuations? Well, you know, that's kind of a hard question. Now, it doesn't matter because Tesla is actually not in the S&P 500 at this point. It's part of the broader market uh, that uh, people, and in particular retail investors, uh, are trading. Um, mm -hmm. I was looking at some data this morning, and, uh, you know, average uh, daily turnover in the United States, uh, which was in the 8 or 9 billion share a day range, uh, over the last quarter has been as high as 17 billion shares a day. And a lot of that increase has come from the retail space. And the stocks that they tend to trade uh, in the cash equity space are non-S&P 500 listed stocks. Hmm. Really? Yeah, yeah. So I was looking at the, uh, the most recent uh, Robinhood report and uh, some other information that was released by the other big U.S. discount brokers. So obviously... Uh, the folks who service the uh, retail population in the United States. And, uh, you know, people are trading individual stocks. And, uh, you know, of course, Tesla's a hard stock for a retail investor to trade. Uh, what, what's the board lot these days? Uh, well, they did. They just split it and we put the price up on two episodes ago, I think. Yeah, they did a yeah. five for one. Yeah, yeah. So it's a few hundred bucks, but yeah, it's 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 one of those. But it's things still where, a twenty thousand uh, dollar yeah. trade to trade a hundred shares. I think it's hard to buy to a board lot. Hundred thousand dollar share uh, trade, right? Yeah. yeah so uh, yeah, it, it's uh, so as I say, it's a tough name to trade for retail, but they are um, now in the odd lot market by and large. But but uh, you know, again, people are in fact piling in. Um, for fear of missing out on you know what they see as the uh, as the gains in this particular market, and what's particularly interesting is that um, you know again not to uh, shine the uh, flashlight on Robinhood unduly, uh, but their clientele is generally speaking quite young, um, you know mobile savvy uh, users who have not had brokerage accounts before, and uh, their clientele are coming into the market literally by the millions, 
And uh, that's, uh, you know, that's having a profound effect. And we see the similar, uh, similar patterns in Canada, where retail participation rates are up. The Canadian Securities Exchange volumes uh, are, are increasing month over month. Um, I think we had our first uh, June to July increase, uh, which never happens uh, because, uh, you know, people tend to go on vacation. They're not trading individual, ind individual stocks and so on. Yet this year, we saw an increase in volume uh, from June, which was very healthy, to July, uh, which, was, uh, which was a really good month. Today, hmm. uh, we traded almost 140 million shares, um, you know, so it's, uh, wow. it's active and it's largely driven by the, uh, the retail population that, uh, you know, are active and, and engaged in the markets um, uh, at this time. Do you, do you think people are disenfranchised by packaged investment products like ETFs or, uh, you know, mutual funds where, you know, it, it's not great water cooler talk anymore to <laughs> people aren't chatting about the huge double digit gains they got on their ETF for their, uh, their mutual fund. Well, as, as one of the founders of the ETF uh, uh, industry in Canada, and I guess that makes the world because uh, we were the first to get uh, an ETF listed on the Toronto stock exchange way back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, you know, you're right. I mean, you know, ETFs uh, aren't supposed to be water cooler talk. Uh, they're supposed to be an extremely cost-effective way for people to uh, acquire um, uh, access to broader market trends. And one of the things that we know from hundreds of years of data at this point is that equity markets uh, tend to return somewhere between 6 and 8% uh, compounded annually over the long term. And uh, it's extremely unlikely for individual stock pickers to beat uh, that benchmark uh, again, on, on similar sort of time horizons that people should be thinking about for their retirement savings, their children's educations, and, and, and so on. Now, that said, again, we're getting back into the behavioral economics. Uh, you know, people love to talk about the penny stock that they bought um, that uh, has uh, gone yeah, up by I got a 30 bagger. 10, I got 20, a 50, 50 bagger. times or whatever. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you know, that's. Uh, uh, that touches some uh, pleasure centers deep in the um, the lizard brain uh, of the human <laughs> the human beings, and uh, you know it it uh, it it, it uh, you know brings people back to that particular market. And don't get me wrong; I mean it's an extremely important part of the capital formation process for for young companies because Lord knows big companies are going to come from somewhere, and uh, by and large, uh, you know we've. We're, we're at the Canadian Securities Exchange in a position to nurture uh, the growth of those companies. Um, but again, it's a very complicated uh, uh, dynamic as people, you know, think about, you know, instead of these sort of broad market investments, uh, looking at uh, individual stock picking, which is really what goes on uh, more in the small cap space than in the, uh, in, in the large cap space. Um, I got a question and I don't, I'm not sure how we are for time. But earlier, uh, when we were talking off camera, um, you were discussing a lot of about inflation and mm -hmm. the role that inflation played in what's going on today. Uh, could you uh, just briefly touch on that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it, it, it's not just inflation, but of course, interest rates as well, Barrington. Yeah. Um, you've got a situation now where uh, you know money is effectively free. And uh, you have signals uh, from the uh, leading central banks in the world uh, that they're basically prepared to, to pump unlimited amounts of liquidity into the system uh, to prevent uh, the, uh, you know, in effect, uh, finance markets, whether it's debt or equity, from seizing up. And, uh, you know, that, that's had a few effects. I mean, one of them is, you know, it does make equity look very attractive. Uh, for, because companies are able to secure growth capital at a very low cost. Entrepreneurs are able to build businesses uh, without having to pay, you know, significant, you know, double digit uh, uh, rates in order to, to, to raise capital. But by the same token, there are a bunch of folks out there who sense that uh, this could lead in the longer term to inflation. And uh, with this amount of money being pumped into the system by the central banks. And that's why you see the... Um, uh, dramatic increase in uh, gold, uh, which is traditionally seen as a hedge against inflation. And, uh, uh, you know, as a knock-on uh, consequence of that, 
uh, you know, the gold exploration space and the, pr the gold production space uh, has, uh, has gone up quite dramatically over the last, uh, as you know, from, you know, three to six months. And uh, again, where, what we see um, in the uh, in, you know in the business that we're working on at the Canadian Securities Exchange um, are a number of new um, exploration projects that are attracting funding uh, from investors, and in the secondary market, uh, investors looking to uh, buy um, names that uh, come up with uh, promising results. Um, so again, cheap money right now but uh, concerns that uh, there are significant inflationary pressures to come um, in a maybe two to five year time horizon. <laughs> so everyone's uh, using this cheap capital to move to the suburbs, not going to work anymore, <laughs> buy a stock pick and hope to make their fortune so they never have to go back to work. Um, well, uh, the, uh, James, I guess I'm, I'm counter, <laughs> uh, counter to the trend uh, because, you know, I, I'm, as you know, uh, we've sold the rural property and we're moving back to the city. So, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> which, 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 which may be, uh, uh, you know, again, moving against the herd. Uh, I don't know, but, uh, we'll see how that, you works know, based on our, based on our trader TV, uh, discussion, you are a contrarian. Yeah, <laughs> that may be. <laughs> so we, uh, we don't see a lot of bear signals in the market, but we do see a bear on the podcast tonight. So uh, that's all I care about. And uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll keep an eye on this topic uh, as the trillions get higher and things get more whipped up into a frenzy uh, in the market. Richard, I'm sure we'll bring you back for a second aftermarket. After all, you are our boss. But <laughs> uh, we not really less, want you to. Unless I get a bathroom. <laughs> we really want you to, to earn that brokini. Uh, and uh, you know what? You can have one. I will buy one for you. What the heck? Yeah. But, <laughs> uh, but thanks again. We really appreciate your insight on this stuff. Uh, we do want to provide educational content uh, and engaging educational content at that uh, through aftermarket. So thank you for your knowledge. And uh, until next time, Richard, uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on the market together and uh, we'll see you soon. Real pleasure, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks a lot, right. Richard. And uh, <laughs> this has been a segment of going beyond the headline. <laughs> Boom. <laughs>